It's this camera, right? Oh, it's this one? Well, hey guys, welcome to Movie Bird. I'm your host, Scribbles O. McHenry. We're so glad that you liked the last episode that we wanted to make the show even more special by adding more visual aids. Yeah. Now when I bring up a viewer's comment on the screen with this here remote, there's gonna be a nice little picture or maybe even a little video that goes with it to better illustrate the point they're trying to make. You got it, guys? So today, we're gonna go the distance and lace up our gloves and put on our boots and uh, step into the ring because we're talking about Creed 2 which stars Michael B. Jordan, Sylvester Stallone, Tessa Thompson, and directed by Stephen Cable Jr. So, did the pictures work? When I said their names, they came on the screen? Well, they did? Good, yeah, all right. This is working, guys. So Creed 2 is the sequel to Creed, which Creed is a sequel to Rocky Balboa. And from what I understand, Rocky Balboa is the sixth movie of the Rocky series, making Creed and Creed 2 the seventh and eighth installments. I guess I forgot to put numbers on some of the later ones and lost count. I don't know. All I know is that Creed 2 is the newest one, and boy, I think we've got the best one here yet. Yeah. I gotta admit, though, I've only seen Rocky IV from the previous bunch, and, uh, you know, I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite movies, though. It's one of my favorites. You know, you've seen Rocky IV, right? It's the one where he befriends that young man named Tommy Machine Guns, and then he's all like, hey, don't do that stuff. So then they fight in the streets, and then they're all like, what? Oh, well, that's the fifth movie. Wait, are you sure? Like, a five makes the IV. Oh, it's just the V. Oh, well, my bad, folks. I'm talking about the fifth movie, okay? Rocky V, check it out. You know, it's one of my favorite movies ever. But that's not the movie we're here to talk about today, because today we're talking about Creed 2, so let's get into it. And in this movie, we follow a young man named Donnie Diodonis, the fresh new hot boxing champion who takes on Victor Drago, who I guess is Ivan Drago's little brother. What? Oh, is his son. Oh uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense now. Okay. Adonis struggles with his inner turmoil with having to face a man who is the son of the man who killed his father in a boxing match decades ago, and how he feels compelled to avenge his father. I felt they clearly established and fully fleshed out Adonis' goal, which made us really want to root for him. And I'm sure it gave us a completely fresh new spin that we've never seen before in the Rocky series. I bet there's nobody trying to avenge Apollo's death in the other ones, come on. This movie delivered the punching, the hooks, the lefts, the cuts, the blows, all the blows, okay? And it also brought the love and the family drama. This was a real tearjerker in a heartstring puller, let me tell you what. This was a real total knockout while also going the distance. Yeah, figure that one out, buddy. Let's go to the viewers' comments, though, because you know how I feel. I loved it, but I want to know what you feel. So let's get you going here. Let's see how much you really enjoyed this movie. Oh, and before I do this, I should warn, there's gonna probably be spoilers from here on out. So if you haven't seen this one yet, don't watch me yet. Go watch that first, then come back to me, okay? We'll see you then. Unless you've seen it, then all right, let's do this. First up is Mistletoes 1225. Creed 2, much like the original Creed, pales in comparison to the Rocky movies that they imitate. Creed was merely a repackaging of the original Rocky, but without the memorable impact. Creed 2 is a meld of elements from Rocky 2, 3, and 4. So that's 4? That's what 4 looks like, IV? Well, all right, if you say so, I guess I've got to believe you. Yet falls flatter than all three of those films. There's barely anything original to be found in these Creed films. Well, okay, it seems like you didn't like this one. That's fine, that's what we're about here. You know, you can feel however you want. We just wanna have a good fashion discussion about it. That's all we're looking for, yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't seen those other Rocky films, so I can't attest to what you're saying. I can only assume this newest Creed movie definitely sets out to distinguish itself from the previous installments, because what else would be the point? It's not like they just lazily turn out films for money. Come on now, jeez. But I bet this next person well, uh, he's gonna like this movie, come on. San Francisco 69er says, now hold on a second. I'm not much of a sports person. I don't really watch them at all, but I'm pretty sure that means San Francisco 49er, right? Isn't that the team? Oh wait, what? The 69 means what? 
Oh, goodness, that's just, no, we can't have that. Oh, let's just read what they have to say. Here's some direct comparisons in Creed 2 to Rocky 2. Our protagonist awkwardly proposes to his girlfriend. The protagonist has a child with his lover. The protagonist wins the title. A guy on TV asks where he is. But the question on everyone's mind is, where is Creed? But there's only one problem. Where is Rocky Balboa? The protagonist buys a nicer place to live. Well, I mean, if you come into money, why not buy yourself a nice little home, you know? I wish someone would buy me a nice home, so then I could stop living underneath the bridge above the local arcade. If I hear that Pac-Man jingle one more time, I'm gonna lose it, guys! Come on! Play something else! Alright, let's look. Oh wait, you have more to say here. Okay, let's hear it. Here's comparisons in Creed 2 to Rocky 3. Our champion protagonist fights an out-of-nowhere upcoming big scary and ruthless competitor who comes from a blighted situation. Our protagonist loses the first fight because his head isn't in the right place, and then he redeems himself with the second fight. Also, the protagonist admits fear. What were you really fighting for? I was afraid. What's the truth, damn it? I'm afraid, all right? Now hold on a second there, buckaroo. Adonis didn't lose that first fight. He won by disqualification. Yeah, what do you think about that, Jack? He suffered a moral defeat, you dolt. Adult? What? I, I don't even know what that word means, but I feel offended by it. Don't call me adult, sir. I assume it's not nice. After the loss, the protagonist goes through a sulking, depressive state. The protagonist is then confronted by an unlikely ally to get his mind right. And he puts him through a tough new training regimen that broadens his fighting knowledge and skills. Okay, is that it? You don't have any more comparisons of Creed just being Rocky? Okay, we can move on then. Here's some comparisons in Creed 2 to Rocky 4. Hey, it's still this guy. Oh, really? Ugh, fine, go ahead. The protagonist fights a guy with the last name Drago. The fight takes place in Russia. The protagonist trains in unconventional manners in a remote area, while the antagonist trains in a nicer facility. Ivan refers to breaking someone. My son will break your boy. I must break you. Bloody towels. Are you done? Okay, wow. Well, I think the audience likes callbacks like this. It taps into that sweet nostalgia spot. It gives you a feeling of remembering something you experienced when you were younger. Yeah, the sweet joy of new memorable experiences and you get to live that time again. You remember those? I mean, I think I'd rather relive these memories than demand new original content. I don't know if I'm gonna like new original content. I don't know. But I do know that I like being reminded of stuff I've seen before. And hey, and if you've never seen the Rocky movies like me, then Creed 2 is a whole new experience, which I think is great because new experiences can be wonderful. Yeah, and I think Creed 2 is wonderful, so I guess I never have to watch the Rocky movies now. I'm all caught up, that's great. All right, so let's see what you think of that. Normal Guy 420 says, small callbacks to previous movies are fine. Stomach, oh, and a big rib shot. Look at you, your ribs look like they broke. But when plot points are being recycled, it comes off as lazy. To be fair, the Rocky series has been guilty of the same. Aha, so there, the Rocky series isn't even that good, I knew it. Although I would recommend checking out Rocky V, it's pretty good, it's one of my favorite movies. But let's stop comparing the Rocky movies to these Creed ones, all right? Let's talk about the characters, because I really like that Donnie fellow and that Bianca lady. They were a really adorable couple, and I can't imagine there's ever been a better on-screen couple than them. Their scenes together were completely imaginative, unique, and never dull. So what do you think? Do you agree with me? I bet you do. Princess Thunderbottom says, Adonis and Bianca are too conventional of characters to find the same sympathy and fondness we found with Rocky and Adrian. Rocky is an unintelligent, outgoing goofball courting an emotionally beat-down introvert in Adrian. While their scenes together in the first two movies can be awkward, this is a result of who they are as people, which adds nuance to the story. We want to see these two social cast-offs find love like any normal person. 
We root for them because they are charming, funny, quirky, and struggle with day-to-day -day working class problems. We identify with their plights on an emotional and relatable level, and we want to see them overcome. Yeah, they might be a couple of weirdos, but weird is interesting. And also in their case, it's endearing. I find none of this death with Adonis and Bianca. They're just too ordinary. Ah, oh, you think weird is cute, do you? Okay, I mean, I'm not gonna judge. Well, I don't think my true love Yolanda is weird. I think she's an angel. But perhaps she thinks I'm weird. And if you're saying weird's good, then maybe that'll actually get me a date with her. Yeah, I'm weird, right? Oh, I am. Well, that's good. Oh, wait, it's not good? Well, why is it not good for me? All right, fine, I'll get back on the show here. Okay, well, you didn't really like the characters there, viewer, so maybe, well, so what do you think about his journey? About Adonis' quarrels? I bet this next person liked them. Let's hear it. Gravy Monster says, What exactly is the conflict with Adonis accepting the fight with Victor the first time out? We're led to believe from his loved ones that it's a bad idea because apparently they all think he's gonna die just like his father. What an absurd reaction! Adonis is the current champ, so he has to take a fight with someone regardless. Do his loved ones fear his death to this degree every time? Or do they really believe Victor will specifically be aiming to kill him? Rocky refuses to train Adonis for the first fight because of painful memories. Due to guilt, Rocky realizes after seeing Donnie get mauled that he should have trained him, so he does so for the second fight. Look. I get that Rocky isn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but even he would know better than to throw a loved one to the wolves. So I don't buy that Rocky wouldn't want to train Adonis for Victor from the get-go. Wolves? Were there wolves in this movie? I don't remember that. But hey, can you really blame Adonis' family and friends for not wanting him to fight Victor? He is a big, strong-looking boy. I wouldn't want to fight him, and I know my friends wouldn't want me to fight him. Right, guys? Guys? But I think you're missing the point here, friend. Donnie D had nothing to gain from fighting Victor. Victor was a symbol of his father's dilemmas, and Adonis doesn't need to fight those battles. Come on. He needs to forget about it and be his own man. What do you think? Maple Syrup Body Wash says, Later in the story, the movie pushes Adonis' dilemma towards being that he's too worried about living up to his father's legacy of being a champion. Because of this is why his mind wasn't right going into the first fight with Victor. However, we learn this well after he lost the first fight and while reconnecting with Rocky. But before the fight, it seemed his problem mentally was that he was getting too emotional about being called out for a fight by people responsible for his father's death and Adonis felt it was his duty to make these people pay for what they had done. At story's end, Adonis' revelation is that he knows now that his focus on being a great champion should be on supporting his wife and child. And his focus should not be on worrying about being a great champion because of the pressure of living up to his father's legacy. I'm not saying this isn't a bad angle for the story to take, but this struggle should have been clear right out of the gate and not dropped on us an hour and 15 minutes into the movie and not have been obscured with his prior dilemma. Which was him not being mentally prepared because he got so inside his own head by letting his emotions run wild and wanting to redeem his father by defeating Ivan Drago's son. These two conflicts should have worked more uniformly with each other and more consistently throughout the entire film. Wow, that's a lot you just said there, Buster. I don't even know where to begin. All I know is that Donnie was the good guy and he was mad at the bad guy, Victor, okay? And I think you're overthinking this one. Sometimes you just gotta let your mind enjoy the ride without thinking so hard about the gears that run the ride, you know? Storytelling isn't about reflecting over hard choices in life and observations of inner struggles. It's about having a good time and eating your popcorn while you do it, bud. Come on. You just gotta turn that brain down to fun, you know? Just like the boxing fights in this movie. Those were fun. That's why anybody would want to watch a Rocket movie in the first place. Or a Rocky hybrid movie in this case is to see the boxing fights. Everything else is inconsequential, buddy. What do you think? Two Burgers and a Shake says, Rocky's original match with Apollo was meaningful because of the time we spent with Rocky. I don't even care if there are punches that clearly miss even though we're supposed to believe they landed. That's a superficial error that doesn't detract from the context of Rocky's struggles leading up to the fight, and his goal of setting out to prove that he wasn't just some bum. 
The story had me so invested that something so trivial as a missed punch doesn't sway me. While Creed 2's boxing scenes were wonderfully shot and choreographed, the movie's lack of getting me invested in Adonis' struggle made me not feel the importance of the fight. So no matter how pretty those fights looked on the outside, they filled hollow inside. Wow, so a person who didn't even like the boxing fights. What's going on here? How come we always get these detractors on the show? Where's all the positive comments, huh? Come on, now it's, we're supposed to be having fun here, guys. And I feel like I'm getting beat up in a fight here. That's not fun for me. So let's, let's get these nice comments going in here. Let's hear it right now. Tickle Me Melvin says, It's always great to see Sylvester Stallone play Rocky Balboa. He effortlessly flows charisma, which makes Rocky the most endearing movie character of all time. It's impossible not to love him. Oh, well, there we go. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Let's keep that going. That was a nice comment. All right, let's keep it going. I, I leave in a toilet? Wait. Oh, I, I live in a toilet. I see. How clever. That's gross. Well, they say, even though characters like Adonis, Bianca, and Victor are nowhere near as memorable as Rocky, Adrian, and Ivan, the actors of the former mentioned characters did a fine job. Any setbacks of their characters can be attributed to the writing and not by their performances. Okay, I guess that was a compliment. It seemed nice. Well, let's keep it going. Any more? Sweating Sam says, Did you just win a poop-filled pie-eating contest? Or does your face always look like that? What? Oh, that's ridiculous. Who would do that? I don't do that. Now shame on you for saying it. Man. Oh, jeez, that's gross. Well, pie does sound good, though. Maybe we should get some after we're done with this. Well, let's move to the next person. Number two fan says, Hey, Scribbles, I think you're doing a great job as a host. Aw, oh, why thank you, viewer. Oh, how sweet of you to say that. Oh, man, that really boosted me up. I needed that one. Yeah. Oh, he's got more. Okay. Yeah, the host of the Stupid and Ugly Show. Okay, wow. Hey, mister, that's not very nice. You know, my ring is out there, okay? But if you touch me, then I will sue you. Yeah, remember those lines from Rocky V? They were great. Well, I sure showed that guy. Yeah, who's the tough guy now? Yeah, uh, it's me, baby. Oh, oh, jeez. Uh, I'm gonna have to stretch that one out. Yeah, I think I've proved myself here. Let's move on to the next folk. Kelly, Clark's son, says, the problem the movie had with Victor was that he was too sympathetic of a character. We see him controlled by his domineering and manipulative father, Ivan. He's pushed by his father's desires to win back the respect of his homeland, Russia, and to perhaps win back the heart of his father's ex-wife, who is also Victor's estranged mother. It's established that Victor is frustrated by his father's plan, yet he feels powerless to go against him. As a result, we feel bad for Victor, and we don't see him as quite the adversary as we should, which takes away focus from Adonis' conquest. The underdog story concept is the driving spirit of the Rocky franchise, and Victor feels like the true underdog in this tale, when it should be Adonis. Alternatively, what's even more problematic is that we only get brief scenes with Victor and Ivan, and we're left yearning and wanting their story fleshed out more. Man, now I feel bad for him. But I can't do that because I want Adonis to win. Man, now I'm just confused. Let's continue. Uncle, I'm not saying that word. I'm not going to say it. Well, Uncle, uh, Boof, it's nice to see Stitch Duran on Rocky's side after seeing him in Dixon's corner in Rocky Balboa. That turncoat? Stitch. That's a weird first name, don't you think? Man, who came up with that one? Chickens are scary, says. Despite all the criticisms of Creed 2, it's still an okay movie. It's not great. It doesn't hold a candle to the magical and indelible Rocky movies, but it's fine for what it is. Although what seems to hold it back is its tethers to Rocky 4. It would be better for the Creed series if it could just be its own thing without being crutched by nostalgia. Well, there's that word again, nostalgia. Man, I don't get it. Creed 2 is a completely different movie to me. It's nothing like Rocky. I mean, Rocky and Adonis aren't even the same person, hello? Seems like you have a problem with Rocky 4 there, fella. 
And I thought people loved that movie. Well, I loved Creed 2, and I think it's the best movie of 2018, hands down, can't be topped. What do you think of that? Vinegar Bandit says, If we were to be honest, Rocky IV is arguably the low point of the entire series. Killing off Apollo in the manner that they did is arguably the stupidest thing about the entire series. Just think of how great it would be to have Apollo in these Creed movies. Rocky IV is a stupid movie. But admittedly fun at times. Wow, we. Wow, that's brave to say that, friend. I don't think people like you talking about Rocky IV like that. Jeez. But you know what? I, I like Rocky V anyway, and I would recommend that one to you. What do you think? What do you think about Rocky V? The artist formerly known as whatever that is says, I believe Rocky V gets a worse reputation than it should. And it's arguably better than Rocky IV?